Well, hello and welcome to the at-home edition of Rocket League Central. I'm Brody Lee Fex Moore, and I've got everything that you need to keep up to date on everything Rocket League. We've got a great show for you guys today, as per usual. We've got the highlights from Europe and Grid Watch, including the European Regional Number 3 and the Grid. Double Tap is featuring Vitality. And you know we got all the community stuff in Breakout. You know, I always like to drop some good news on you guys right off the bat here. And this time, it's for PlayStation fans. Right now, you can go and redeem in the store the following free items. Let me list these off here. If you've got PlayStation Plus, Septum BL Wheels, Polygonal BL Boost, Pixelated Shades BL Topper, and the Pollo Caliente BL Decal. So get on there, redeem those if you got your PlayStation Plus. Anyways, we need to move on to the rest of the show here and get you all caught up to date with Rocket League. And we start with the action from Europe in Gridwatch. <laughs> Europe's final spring split has concluded and it's proven to be the most shocking, nail-biting tournament of Season X so far. Full of underdog victories and down-to-the-wire matches, there's lots to unpack as to what made the third European Spring Regional so exciting. First off, the knockout gauntlet. While the spring split's unique format has several times already resulted in unexpected turnabouts and early eliminations, this time was especially notable. Several of Europe's top teams, including Vitality, Dignitas, Top Blokes, and Solary, were sent home before playoffs even began, leaving a field of lesser-known contenders standing with BDS in the quarterfinals. Speaking of BDS, their final results were among the most surprising parts of an already electrifying event. While they triumphed over Atlantide 4-1 in their first match of the playoffs, awaiting them in the semifinals was a dark horse foe, Guild Esports, a fledgling team who have seen less than stellar results throughout the Season X thus far. Things seem to be going in BDS' favor early in the set, as most would have predicted from the team that's been dominating Europe all year. But then Guild managed to swing momentum back in their favor with a couple of hard-fought overtime wins in the third and fourth games, quickly tying it up. With a titanic push, Guild closed it out 4-3, sending BDS packing and moving on to the Grand Finals. Devo wants to go solo. He's already Devo. beaten Xavier once before, almost was again, but extra read that bump. Off the ceiling, throw it, attempt to go for the second extra though. Up quick as you like, needed to get that touch. Nolly sees nobody centre, has to do it himself. Devo the though, there to take advantage of the bump. Touch from Nolly, finds though the double opportunity. It's it's shot to the it's top it's corner, and so sends Guild into the Grand Finals. Not to be left out, the other side of the bracket was also experiencing its share of twists, starting with Team Queso, the winners of the previous regional, who lost in an intense seesaw match to the newly formed BS Plus competition, and formerly known as Godzilla's team. BSC even sealed the deal with a 4-0 blowout in the last game, styling on the defending champions with glee. Yeah. BS Plus called a tactical timeout right after that and now put a four spot on Queso in the waning seconds of a thrilling match. A Chronic wants one more for the road. He's oh. not going to get it. It just ripped off the post. But this has been quite a return to form in game seven. Freaky off the post, but it's a formality, Corelli. A victory lap around Champions Field for BS Plus. They're headed to the semifinals in emphatic fashion. Now you can see the players of BS Plus there. Hands on their heads going, oh man. They're done. Woo, they're done. Man. Meanwhile, the consistently solid Galaxy Racer was one up by Aether, a team formed of rejects from other top teams. They went on to duel BSC in the semis, and it was once again an extremely close match. In the end, Aether clutched it out, taking two back to back overtimes that sent them into the grand finals to face Guild for all the marbles. BSCO will breathe for a moment. Gotta be careful. Again. You do not want to let what was happening during regulation get started again. It was really, like you said, pulling them left and right and stealing all their boost. Floater towards the right side of the net, got Smilla in time, and a chronic with a little space comes up big, empty eeks on the oh, box, it right feels side, wow. in! Aether are gonna go to the grand finals! Aether find a way through in overtime, what a pass play! Ultimately, Aether just couldn't stand up to Guild's hot streak and were steamrolled in a 4-1 match, with Guild pulling off some goals that would make David Beckham proud. Guild have looked like the stronger of the two. Molly back down once again, and for a team that has had so many ups and downs this season, have been forced to trust oh. the process to take losses. Oh. Nolly 
One hit to add the exclamation mark. Devo sets it up. <laughs> Foe won't quite be there, showing some patience. But the process has worked. Guild Esports are regional champions. And they finally, after being so disciplined, let themselves know about it. Three spring regionals have given rise to three different champions. And now all eyes are on the upcoming major. Can BDS reclaim their crown? Or will yet another contender emerge from the most contested region in the world? My face is not... Now on the RLCS, Gibbs has been talking about who he thinks is the hardest working man in all of Rocket League esports. He's been calling it Roll Diz, but I think our guest coming up here is making quite the <laughs> statement for himself. It's Damar Williams, a.k.a. Dazzery, coming to the show. Welcome. Thanks for joining me, man. Thanks for having me. Uh, that's definitely the, the nicest intro I've gotten ever. So I appreciate <laughs> well, that, Lee. <laughs> I got you. I got you. No, it's true, though. I mean, we talk about everything that's going on. We, you know, we uh, talked to T Bates last week about First Touch. That's something you've been on, too. That was, you know, one of your uh, your little uh, child projects there that you guys started up and then it got picked up yeah. onto the main broadcast. So there's been a lot going on. Plus, you're doing the RLCS casting. There's so much. You had to pick up the, the B stream on your own channel the other day. You're busy, man. You got a lot going on. So walk me through that. Let's let's talk about everything you got going on okay. right now and, and what uh, what Rocket League Esports has been for you in the past few months. It's been wild. Yeah, yes, it, it has. If we just want to go to this year alone, it's been a lot of work. We talk about, you know, the side streams like NRG Grid, for example, uh, they're doing fantastic. I think in terms of grid streams for North America, they run the best grid stream. They get like, they've been getting more and more viewers to the point where I think they peaked at like 9K last stream. Yeah, right, which is crazy for a grid stream, crazy. Uh, I do that with James Bot. Then we do, uh, let's see, NRG's now doing the regionals, like day zero, so I'm helping them out with that. But even if we start from Monday, and go just down the week, for example, Monday, we do first touch. First touch every Monday, 10 a.m. Pacific, unless there's something going on with like Europe or something, and then we'll schedule around that. Tuesdays are usually free unless there's something crazy. Like, for example, um, on the 20th of April, there's grid playoffs. So I'll be working that day. Uh, Wednesdays to Thursdays are CRL days. CRL's been going on. I think we're like around the midway point of the season but that's uh every wednesday and thursday night where you know we all get together and do that show friday is again day zero of a regional so i'll either be doing nrg stream or if it's europe i'll just i'll just be you know hanging out and then saturday uh oh wait no oh my god no fridays <laughs> and saturdays how yeah. much you have. <laughs> Fridays and Saturdays are RLCS. Thursdays are the day zeros. Oh, yeah. But, but that's too much. That, you can't even keep it's, track of it. <laughs> it's all over the place. It's all over the place. Yeah, let's, of course, talk about Rocket League. You know, let's dive into what's happened recently. We just had right. the last European uh, major finish off regional, or uh, regional, sorry, regional number three just passed us by. And uh, it was a wild one, to say the least. You know, we, we I, Daz, I feel like we, we've had uh, a pretty stable occurrence happening over in the European region and it's been under the three letters of BDS you know we, we always know the inevitable is BDS and while they do have themselves a spot in the major coming up they do have a spot in that uh, European championships that didn't happen this weekend we had some new faces come up so I, I just want to get your initial thoughts off the bat of what you're when we look at the European region what are we seeing because we have a lot of discussions behind oh the European region is uh, less depth. It's messier right now, but maybe it's because there's more depth and people haven't figured it out. What are your thoughts just on the region? The fact that we got such a wild final bracket for this for this regional. I think Europe as a region is kind of going through a process right now where they are like every the, everyone had, was so used to a norm, and now you see up and coming teams really trying to step up and go to the next level. And some teams are very hungry in terms of getting to that next step. That for a big period of time when people would play against bds uh at least from my view and some of my peers they were teams would be scared when they would play you could tell that this mechanical guy isn't playing really mechanical if anything like he looks kind of nervous and, and things like that but i feel like they develop a different mentality where now they're like okay sure bds are here but we want we want to beat them we are ready to take them down and they are challenging the consistency of the teams at the top. And we've talked about, you know, top eight teams in terms of world standings and how they have been 
or, well they haven't re necessarily been in top eight in the last couple of regionals and then of course obviously bds in the last couple of regionals haven't made it to the grand finals let alone one so i think this is definitely uh i'd say a wake-up call for bds they've you know uh an off week was last week i think this week is definitely uh -huh. more so on the the other teams like guild for example who uh, you know took this as an opportunity to you know advance their gameplay and advance their standings yeah. they really needed to win that regional and they did and i think there's more to say on those types of teams who are fighting to make their way to the top there and challenging those who are you know the gatekeepers of the top six or so thank you so much for joining me i really appreciate it and i know i'll be talking to you soon thank you so much leaf take care miss you Target, nobody helped him out. Oh, Salem got bumped out of the way. A chronic, two nice challenges. He got the demo as well, and the shot's Whoa. good from God Smilla. Ace combat from BS <laughs> Plus to take the game. MVP effort from a chronic to get across the box. Up until now, no one with another mind game. Flip reset, fake, and another dunk from No. Oh my goodness. The mind games from Guild are doing work. It's like they just go as simple as you can for 95% <laughs> of the game. Keep blasting it to the other side of the field. I'm apart. When you talk about implications for Guild, they need this win to secure their spot in the major. And oh. that double tap! Holy! A monster out there on the field! He is doing so much of the heavy lifting. He's way faster than Tho. Absolutely dust him in the air. Buy extra just took him out for it. Now Guild's ending it on the attack. Devo can oh. win it here. He's got a chance for a double. Oh. And Devo has sucked the double. Five seconds left. Devo may have just given Guild the win. The former world champion beating out two of the best players in the world and double tapping it. All right, that's enough of the best of the best. We got to get to the rest of the rest. It's time for the breakout. First up, Turtle Crusher absolutely destroys another player's confidence. <laughs> You know what? I'll I'll give it a an eight out of ten. You would have gotten the extra points if you'd gone for the aerial demo at the end. Gotta finish it off, but still, what a bully. Next up, Doggy Doggy What Now says his girlfriend just started playing and is already styling on folks. Wow, hey, look, everyone, this guy's got a girlfriend. Rub it in, why don't, wait, I have a girlfriend too. Why am I complaining? P pretty cool goal. Just proves that Rocket League is brain dead. Moving on, Rod H1017 shares this one that is just so dumb, honestly, it's pretty funny. Pay attention to the clock at the top there. One eternity later. Is that footage from the RLC? It looks like footage from the RLC. That's pro level play, right? I'm just surprised there wasn't more faking quick chat spam uh, in the quick chat there, but we got to move on. Our next one is coming from Scary Stock 2982 
and was totally calculated with a capital C. And once again, proving that Rocket League is brain dead. Just drive, stuff will happen, you have no control. It's all up to the Rocket League gods at the end of the day. Finally though, for our last one, Pete Solo wants to show off how they have mastered end-to-end -end dribbling. We started off with demos and we ended up with cross map bumping. There's a lot of aggression today. Producers, are you are you okay? You wanna you wanna talk about something here? But good good job either way. Anyways, up next, we're looking at a fan favorite in double tap. It's all about vitality. Underdog stories can be fun. Everyone loves to watch a team slowly grind their way to greatness, enduring the highs and lows along the way. But sharks are born swimming, and it can be just as gratifying to see a team that came out swinging and stayed on top. Like Team Vitality, the titans of Europe who continue to be a top contender season after season. It all started in Season 5 of the RLCS. Team Vitality, then known as Renault Vitality, acquired the roster of Guess Who, who were themselves the former Maki esports team. The trio of Fairy Peak, Pashi, and Freaky hit the ground running, managing an impressive second place finish in Vitality's very first regional, a mere two months after their formation. I do not know how Complexity expects to win if saves like that keep happening. Fairy Peak has shut them down every single time. Ten seconds remaining. Everyone on the wall. It's off the side to Magnus. Once again, it's Fairy Peak. A lot looking for the setup, but Metzaris is all the way back in with the miss. That could spell the end of this game. Once the ball hits the floor, it is all over. And Fairy Peak looks to do exactly that. They have got all the work to do, and they will not be able to do it. Reno Vitality versus Gale Force is your European Grand Final. Soon after, the fledgling team saw further success when they took first place in the Gfinity UK Elite Series, beating out several of the region's established teams in the process. Very peak again, looking for the pass out to Freaky. Ignite has intercepted so many passes out of defense in midfield. He's really breaking down Vitality's counter-attack, but still Vitality looking so threatening. That's Big chance here for Mashi. The nation! Freaky! Crowns Vitality your champions! It only needed to be one chance for Vitality, and that's the shot, that's the goal. The top scorer of the Elite Series seals the deal. Before they knew it, their first world championship was upon them. Unfortunately, this event would spell the start of the team's growing pains. Matched up against Cloud9 in their premier match, Vitality was crushed in a 3-0 blowout that sent them down to the lower bracket. There they faced evil geniuses, and while they put up a better fight, they couldn't pull it off and were eliminated without securing a single victory. Touch there from Classics, trying to prevent Freaky from making the play. Barry, trying to get back, will get the boost. The touch, dangerous. Pashi pops it over one. Classics coming in, used up all his boost to challenge. Final 10 seconds. Chrome with a big block here. Center ball. As soon as that ball hits, it's over for Vitality. That is it. Evil Geniuses proves everybody wrong, and they will be moving on. Perhaps in response to this underperformance, Vitality parted ways with Freaky shortly afterwards. The prodigal scrub killer would take his place on the team prior to Season 6, but it was obvious that the new lineup needed to acclimate to each other. Season 6 was the only time on record that Vitality didn't make it to the World Championship land, just barely missing the cutoff with a 5th place finish. The following January, Vitality made another big shakeup, releasing Pashi and signing European legend Kato winner of the prior two RLCS seasons. With KDOP on board, the team was back on track. Vitality blazed through Season 7 Regional, obliterating all competition to enter the LAN as Europe's top team. Has the save out to the back wall. KDOP catches, makes Bluey miss, trying to fight Devo for the ball. Back, it's the Fairy Peak, and it's denied by Devo. Barcelona's goaltending has kept them alive in game number six. Alpha, it's not the best touch. The demo opens the net. KDOP strikes, and Vitality are your re European regional champions. And how fitting that it's KDOP, the player that changed Vitality for the better. They came in expecting 
a battle. The new trio impressed in the early stages, taking it to the playoffs with just a single dropped set, a loss to G2 Gaming. In an exciting turn, the two teams met once again in the grand finals, both steamrolling their brackets for what seemed to be a faded rematch. This time, however, Vitality was ready and armed with both experience and momentum, clobbering G2 4-1 to win the title of world champions. Taking it in, Fairy Peak for Vitality. Met again and it's turned away. Boom, downfield for G2. Kadoff, bad touch, and Gale to get back to it. Scrub killer now, booms it back downfield. Rizzo, around the corner, Scrub killer has the demo. Kadoff around, Fairy Peak's down, Fairy Peak scores! And with that, Vitality take it all! Three Titans, one team! Vitality has maintained this high standard ever since, taking second place in both the Seasons 8 and 9 regionals while being the runners-up in the Season 8 Worlds as well. While Season X has brought with it a terrifying new rival in the form of BDS, Vitality continues to prove their mettle with consistently strong performance. Team Vitality were born winners and will continue to impress for as long as they continue to compete. You know, I, I honestly feel bad for Vitality sometimes because you look at the fact that they just can't get past BDS and everyone's like, ah, Vitality's no good. But no, Vitality is still beating everyone else. Vitality is so gosh dang good at the end of the day. It's just BDS is a little bit better, you know, or a lot bit better, but still Vitality is like a, for sure top number two in the region. And I think sometimes people are subconsciously overlooking them now. They keep getting wins, but you know KDOP is not gonna stop until he takes down BDS. And I'm looking forward to those days. But anyways, guys, that is all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like to check out more of our content, please do so on Twitter, at Squad State, and of course, on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching, as I said. And for a little overtime action, here's your weekly backfire. <laughs>